Assalamualaikum, Mas Sony. Gimana Pak Romi? Siap, siap di Batam. Nama yang dari Alex, siapa Pak Romi saya akan jadikan co-host ya. Nanti biar kalau ada Ya. Boleh, boleh, boleh. Ini siapa ini? Si apa si Giom ini mau ngirimkan presentasinya. Coba di di apa Mas di chat itu nomor email kita. Mas Sony. Oke. Okay. Mas Sony. Ya, Pak Romi. Alamat email kita, Mas, yang sekretariat si Gio mau ngirim itu uh, presentasi di WA. Oh, juga. ya. Oke. Okay. Halo, halo. Halo, Mas Sony, bisa dengar kan? Itu suaranya. Ya, Kak. Mas Sony, halo. Halo, Pak Romi. Suara saya dengar jelas, Mas Sony, ya? Jelas. Jelas, ya? Oke. Okay. Okay. Jadi, saya sudah kirim presentasinya si Giom itu di email. Tolong di-download, ya, Mas, ya? Ya. Yeah. Itu plan B, plan B oh, kalau di, misalnya apa, apa, di YouTube, ya. Mas Sony itu Giom mau mau masuk itu Mas? Pak Romi di admin yang mana namanya Pak? <laughs> Wah. Giom Leste mana yang Leste ya saya? Itu lagi ini lagi mau masuk dah diizinkan dulu. Oh ya sudah. 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 Ya sudah. Sudah masuk ya? Sudah masuk. Mana Giomnya nih? Eh hey, Giom. Hey Giom, I think you are in the mute. You are in still in mute. You need to unmute. Pak Romi materinya PowerPoint mana? Kok di email nggak ada? Ah, ada baru saya email. Email Video. Baru saya email, Mas, ke MAI, MAI. Iya, tapi kok belum ada ya? Presentasi aja itu, presentasi. Ada tak? Tak ada. Belum ada nah. nih, belum masuk mungkin ya. Wah, masa sih ya? WhatsApp aja, WhatsApp. 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 Harus download lagi berarti. Oh, enggak ada belum di mana ya? Dicoba dilihat sas spam. Coba spam spam dulu. Kita kirim lagi ya Sony Kurniawan ya, Sony. Email Sony Sony. aja, Pak. Uh, MAI, aku akal Indonesia gmail.com kan? Yes. Yes. Ini ada apanya uh, PDF-nya. Di email saya pribadi ya enggak ada. Saya hantar nih, saya hantar. Oh. 
wes 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 saya kirim oke okay. ma Giom, 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 you are still in unmute. You need to, you need to unmute. There is a, there is a microphone. Okay, no, no problem. Ah, no, 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 no. sorry. That's all right. uh, yeah. I had some difficulties to find the. Excuse yeah, me. It's... All right. Oh, so, you. you're gonna play the video also, Giom? I don't have any video. You don't have any video, also just presentation. Yeah, I have the. Uh, did you receive my presentation? Yeah, in the PDF file, right? Yeah, but uh, if you're okay, I will, I will share my screen uh, because I have, I have the, the 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 presentation I sent to you, and I also I will use uh, Alex software. Uh, yeah, yeah, you you so, can you can you can demo your software. You can also, uh, yeah, because you have one hour, Jim. It's a long I, I know that. time. Yeah, I I read. Sorry, I read the mail, but uh, it was the night in France, so I, I discovered your your answers this morning. So uh, I made a presentation. As I saw that there was a two-hour slot, I, I made a quite a long presentation. But I think I will go quick on that. I All will right. delete some slides right now, and then uh, I will I will go on the software because I think that uh, that could be interesting to to. Yeah, to introduce to our something with yes, that. Yes, right. So, okay. could you please could you please send the the video, the software to the Mr. Sony? There is a email, a presentation file. In just in case that uh, there is some technical problem during the webinar, and then you need uh, uh you need us to control the the presentation or to to play the video. I I don't have any video. Oh, uh, the software I will okay. I will manage the software at the at the same time. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, so you, you sorry play, about that. You play the software, right? Yeah, I will. I will make the the uh, the formulation in uh, live. Let's say. Okay. So can can you can you share the screen for the software? Uh yeah, but there are quite a lot. Uh, I, I will share the screen. Yeah, no problem. I, I do it right. No, no, that's step step Yeah, yeah. Share my screen. Mas, Mas Sony. Mas Sony. Siap. Gambar si apa wajah sampean itu ini? Uh, berbayang mungkin terlalu putih. Ya, ini. Cari tempatnya begini mungkin. Can you see my screen now? Yes, yes, I can show it. Yeah, so there's a raw materials, production and setting, right? And if I open this window, just wait a minute. Bro, 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 bro. Because it's a lot of different windows, so I need to be sure that uh, all the windows are. Yeah, Can you please, see? Please, yeah, please play around. Can you still see my formula? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, Now, so I think it's good. it's come up and dis disappear. Come up and disappear. Okay. Uh, what's happening now? Just a second. I need to. I share my screen. I would like to share all the screens and I think I have to share screens one by one. That would be difficult for me. Uh, just a minute. All right, you know, oh, I can share oh, in my- No, it's good, no, it's good. Yeah, but okay. uh, I I would like to share all the screens, not just some, uh, not just some screen. I have two screens, and I would ah. like one screens to be shared with you, uh, all the, the the screens if possible. So I'm just looking for, <laughs> for that. Mr. Sony, can we do it? Uh, two screen at the same time. Just no one screen. But I, I, there is one. My computer is uh, right in front of me, and I have another okay. screen on my left. And on this screen, I have my presentation, and I have the software, the formulation software. Okay, okay, that's that's and that's okay. That, share. Yeah, that yeah. you can change. That's uh, you can just simply change the from your laptop to your PC. Yeah, that's it. And uh, uh, I have my PC, and I just want my my PC, but I don't want to share screens one by one. I have my formulation software. I have. For example, I can make three formulas at the same time. 
And okay. I would like to share the three screens with each formula at the same time. And now, as far as I understand, I can just share one, uh, one screen. All right, we can do that then. Uh, do you know how? Say it again. What what yeah, you say? I will I will I will show you. I'm just looking okay. at that. Is it uh, Agrix Abelila is uh, also from from your company? Brill? No, it's another. My, my, this is not my company. I just uh, use this software, and they ask me to do this presentation. But Brill is another company. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. I mean, the, there is a, a there is a Agnes Abelila in the waiting, in the waiting room. If 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 she or he is your friend, we can let you in. Uh, yes, we, we can. No problem. Is it your friend? Because uh, uh, we don't want people login first because this is our rehearsal. Okay. No, no, uh, if, we, we can wait. Okay, we can okay. wait for that. I'm just looking for the, the, the answer about Zoom. How to share multiple screens. All right. Asoni. Jadi, gimana, Pak Roni? Tanggal berapa lagi kita yang kosong, Mas Roni? Tanggal, tanggalnya ya masih kosong nih, maling bulan Juli atau eh bulan Agustus? Agustus ya, untuk Prof. Yusinta ya, kepiting, yeah. kepiting. Oke. Okay. Yes, it will be complicated as I have, uh, I, I have to share all the screens one by one, so it will be uh, a bit complicated like that, but no. Pak Romi, nanti presentasinya yeah. dari narasumber langsung atau dari sini? Dari narasumber. Oh ya sudah. So Guillaume, you control your presentation, right? My my presentation is okay, but the problem is comes from the the formulation software. As I have to, sh you know, each time I want to do something new, I open a new screen in my formulation software. Okay. And uh, I have to share this new screen with uh, with you. All right. I don't know if you understand that. What I mean? Uh, yeah, I understand. You you have to screen, and then you want to share one by one the the. But I think in Zoom, in Zoom, you, you are only allowed to share only one, one file at one time. Yeah, that's what I see. So I will do my best to do it. Uh, the, the, yeah, the, appropriate the thing way. is, uh, the thing is, uh, when you change, when you change the, the file, you just simply uh, turn off the, the, the file that you're sharing right now and then change with another file. Mm, that's it. Mm. So I need to be sure that I share the appropriate screen. So now you see a, a formula, I think. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw it. The wheat industry, soybean mill, Argentina, forty-seven. Yeah, yeah. That's it. <clears throat> okay. So I have, I have to take this into account, but uh, that's okay for me. One, two. I have three formula. Berapa peserta kita mas yang daftar mas? Okay, for that and now. Kalau yang daftar lewat registrasi 447. Dari berapa negara? Kurang lebih ya lima lah. Dari mana aja? Okay. Nah, dulu. And now you see my presentation, I think. Yeah, I saw it. Now is uh, so, so we are we are talking about the participant number now, Guillaume. Uh, there yeah. are several people from several countries attending your presentation today. Okay, perfect. I think you are the you are the big star today. So, uh, yeah, Mr. Sony, how many countries attend this? From what country? Indonesia and Philippines. Mr. Sony. Yes. What country? Five country. Uh, What is the name Indonesia, of the country? India. India, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Kalau good. untuk datanya yang diminta oleh Alex nanti sudah banyak itu kalau data apa company itu kan? Peserta. Okay, nah. okay. Sip, 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 sip. 
Sampaikan okay. juga kalau kita live live uh, di YouTube, Pak. Jadi tidak hanya di Zoom. Oke. Okay. Hey Giom. Ya. Yeah. You can you can let the people in the Halu Tika am, am I pronounce your the, the the company name correct? Yeah. Halu Halu right Tika. Halu Tika. Halu Tika. Okay, okay. Halu Tika. So please let them know that uh, this also broadcast uh, in YouTube. So this is live. So if they are cannot attend the webinar, they can also see our performance YouTube live YouTube. Okay. Okay. You want me to share the the link? Yeah, of yeah. The YouTube. Please, please, please. So oh, all, all all the people in the Halutika. And also in the at the A systems will know about our webinar. I shared it on uh, on LinkedIn, and I think that there was uh, quite a lot of people who who connected yes. to that, or so at least the, the invitation. So, up, uh, just give me a minute. All right. So, give me. Five to seven minutes. I have to go to the west washroom. Yes. To clean no everything. Problem. All right. Everything is okay for for me. What? You also do the same thing, right? Yeah. Perfect. Thanks. All right. Mas Oni, saya izin dulu mas. sekiloan itu enak freezernya aja nggak nggak dipakai buat apa apa kan itu iya. pernah belum lama pun mau pak tapi mana orang enak
Oh, Mas Oni. Mas Oni. Siap, Pak Rami. Bagaimana cara kita live stream ini di Facebook, Mas? Eh, sapa-sapa dulu nih kayaknya. Prof Yusinta, apa kabar Prof? Prof Esti. Baik, baik. Romi, apa Alhamdulillah. kabar? Sehat, sehat Prof. Alhamdulillah. Nih, mau belajar. <laughs> Aduh. Ini luar biasa teknologi nih. Bisa komunikasi terus nih. Ya, Oke, Zoom. Alhamdulillah. Hmm. Dan kita tidak repot kemana-mana. Menghabiskan Betul, waktu bro. di jalan. <laughs> kayaknya jadi ini nih. Setelah new normal jadi platform baru nih kayaknya untuk meeting. Ya. Kayaknya ini tetap penting meskipun COVID sudah berlalu ya. Iya. Lebih hemat. Hemat waktu, <laughs> hemat biaya. <laughs> benar, benar, Prof. Kita hmm. lihat ada Bu Anik nih. Pengawal pakan mandiri. <tuh> Beberapa teman dari GPMT. Iya. Ada juga peserta yang pakai tulisan India kayaknya ini berarti dari India nih. Hey Giom. Yum, you there? Yes, I am. All right. Am I pronounce your name correctly? Yeah, Guillaume... that's it. That's it. Guillaume. Guillaume, Ler... Guillaume Leriste, yeah? Exactly. So you have a education in master in animal production, right? Yeah, that's it. In France. I'm master from France, yes. I'm based in France. And I'm in uh, France now. What is the name of the university? This is a Ecole Superiore. The agriculture, the angels. Ecole, Ecole supérieure d'agriculture d'Angers. Yeah. Ecole supérieure d'agriculture d'Angers. Uh, okay. It means agricultural high school, and Angers is the the name of the city. All right. So you also attend the diagnostic approach at the University of Udine. Is Udine? Is it in mm. Italy? I, Udine is in Italy. Yeah. And also uh, Institute of Zaragoza in Spain, right? Yeah, but that's professional training I met there. Yeah, Zaragoza, there is a <clears throat> a training centers for the Mediterranean productions. So okay. there I went to study flatfish production and uh, epidemiology. And in Udine, it was about uh, parasites. So this uh, this Alex formulation is uh, coming from A systems or Haleutica? A systems, A systems, yeah. Okay, so what is Halutica then? 
Alutica is. Uh, but I will I will introduce the company at the beginning of my speech in two words. Uh, it's a, a company that is dedicated to support uh, feed millers, raw material providers, and additives producers to okay. address the aquaculture feed markets. And uh, basically, we are doing training as uh, as today, feed formulation and consultancy for aquafit. And I use Alix which yeah. is a software developed by A Systems. Uh, my first job when I, I graduated was to uh, to train people to this Alex software uh, in Brazil. Oh. I used to okay. live there. And mm. uh, I, uh, as such, I'm, I'm well trained on this software. And uh, as the opportunity to discuss with you today came through A Systems, the idea was to uh, made my speech and then to apply what I said in the in the software with some uh, uh, some specific tools and uh, that's uh, but we I'm just uh, one of the customers one of the users of uh, Alex and uh, as I am uh, focused on aquaculture when A Systems had the opportunity to to make a partnership with you then they asked me to if I was okay to to give a, a speech on uh, aqua feeds and uh, and aqua raw materials. All right. So that's uh, All right. just to explain how it came. All right. So yeah, you have one hour then. It's, okay. Uh, thank you. The state is yours. Thank you so <clears> much. <throat> uh, well, so I start right now. Hello, hello everybody. So oh, it's uh, yeah. it's uh, so the the rule the 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 rule of game right uh. Uh, Masoni, Miss Masoni. Okay. Masoni, kita mulai kapan ini? Ini jam berapa ini? Jam jam dua. <coughs> jam dua ya. Yeah. So, Yom, uh, Mr. Sony will introduce about our society first, and then uh, I will give some introduction, and then I will give the floor to you. Thank you so much. All right. Silakan, Masoni. Oke, okay. terima kasih Pak Romi. Selamat siang Bapak Ibu semuanya. Uh, terima kasih sudah bergabung di International Webinar yang ke-6 yang diselenggarakan oleh Masyarakat Aquaculture Indonesia or Indonesian Aquaculture Society. Hari ini kita uh, akan kehadiran tamu dari Prancis ya Pak Romi ya. Ya, Prancis. Dari Prancis yang nanti akan menyampaikan uh, beberapa materi. Namun sebelum sebelum kami sampaikan beberapa hal, izinkan kami untuk menyampaikan beberapa tata tertib yang nanti akan kita uh, lakukan bersama. Jadi untuk untuk Fostek yang ke-6 ini uh, disponsori oleh A System dan Alex Formulation. Jadi sebuah uh, industri, sebuah perusahaan dan sebuah program dari uh, salah satunya dari narasumber juga uh, kaitannya dengan uh, pakan. Kemudian yang selanjutnya berkenaan dengan tata tertib dimohon Bapak Ibu semuanya agar bisa menyesuaikan namanya dan institusinya dari mana. Kemudian yang kedua selama berlangsungnya acara mohon untuk tidak mengaktifkan tombol uh, mute. Jadi nanti bisa di pojok paling kiri agar tombol mikrofonnya di mute. Kemudian juga mohon untuk tidak melakukan share screen selama acara penyiar berlangsung. Barangkali nanti kalau ada beberapa peserta yang memang sedikit menjadi, menyebabkan gangguan selama acara akan kami remove di ruang tunggu. Kemudian uh, untuk sertifikat atau e sertifikat dan sok materi nanti dari narasumber akan kami sampaikan melalui email masing-masing peserta hanya memang untuk uh, diprioritaskan untuk member MAI. Jadi dari Bapak Ibu yang memang barangkali belum bergabung sebagai member MAI nanti akan kami sampaikan uh, bagaimana cara uh, bergabung di member MAI. Kemudian yang keenam untuk daftar presensi atau daftar hadir akan kami sampaikan di Zoom chat dan di YouTube chat bagi Bapak Ibu yang bergabung di YouTube. Kemudian nanti barangkali ada pertanyaan-pertanyaan berseputar keanggotaan MAI bisa 
menghubungi nomor CS yang ada di dalam screen itu. Itu yang bisa kami sampaikan untuk siang hari ini. Sesi ke-6 Internasional Fostek akan dipandu oleh Dr. Romi Novriadi, MSD. Beliau adalah Wakil Ketua Masyarakat Aquakultur Indonesia yang saat ini juga berada di eh, Balai Laut Kota Batam. Kepada Pak Romi, waktu dipersilahkan. Terima kasih. Selamat siang. Ya, terima kasih Mas Soni. Semoga suara saya bisa didengar dengan jelas, Mas. Eh. Clear ya? Jelas, Pak Romi. Oke, okay, sip. Uh, selamat siang, Bapak-Ibu semua. Karena ini International Webinar, kita uh, menghargai teman-teman yang mungkin datang dari berbagai negara lain. Saya coba membuat introduction ini dalam bahasa Inggris. Uh, nanti kalau ada pertanyaan dari Bapak-Ibu tentang apa yang disampaikan oleh keynote speaker kita, Guillaume Lereste, silakan saja di, diajukan dalam bahasa Indonesia. Kalau diperlukan, akan saya translate, akan saya terjemahkan ke dalam bahasa Inggris. Namun kalau misalnya bisa diajukan langsung dalam bahasa Inggris ke Guillaume Lereste, ya kita persilakan dengan segala hormat. Jadi, so this is the sixth webinar from Indonesian Aquaculture Society. So I would like to introduce that the, the introduction, the purpose of this webinar is to accelerate the development and use of the alternative uh, dietary ingredients that will allow the global aquaculture industry to grow without putting unsustainable pressure on the industrial fisheries. That's the goal. That's the goal for the for the future aquaculture production. Although the production of fish meal and fish oil has been relatively constant for decades, supplies of the industrial fisheries are limited, but uh, finding alternative ingredients, for me, I think this is very critical. I think Guillaume Reste will explain more about this to find the alternative ingredients and to make a proper diet formulation is also critical to make the aquaculture industry become more efficient. So we know that the FCR, we know that the fit uh, become the ex one of the most expensive costs in the aquaculture industry. So in order to avoid an excessive use of the raw materials, we need to make a, a proper uh, diet formulation. So this webinar, are prepared by Indonesian Aquaculture Society, work together with the Institution of Aquaculture Singapore, and support by the A system uh, that has the formula, uh, software formulation, Alex formulation. Jadi Bapak Ibu, kita di sini akan mendengarkan paparan dari Guillaume Lereste tentang bagaimana membuat formulasi pakan yang baik, uh, bagaimana uh, caranya kalau selama ini kita Uh, saya sendiri juga ketika melakukan formulasi pakan juga kadang-kadang sering menggunakan Excel. Dan di sini Guillaume Reste coba memperkenalkan uh, software yang umum digunakan di beberapa uh, feed millers. Dan mungkin dari paparan Guillaume Reste ini kita dapat mendapatkan sedikit uh, tambahan pengetahuan bagaimana caranya untuk melakukan formulasi pakan dengan menggunakan software. Uh, dan, dan dalam hal ini adalah software yang diperkenalkan oleh Alex Formulation melalui e-sistemnya. So without overdue the time, I give the floor to you, Guillaume Reste. Uh, we have uh, one hours uh, for your talk. You can you can present your talk and also uh, play around with the diet formulation because this is also as the as the training uh, uh, short simply uh, training course for for our society here. And after that, we will continue with the questions and answer for, from the participants to you, Guillaume Reste. So I give the floor to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Hello, everybody. So thank you very much for the opportunity to be here with you today. And uh, thank you for, for your presence. Uh, as, uh, as, as as been said, I will talk about uh, raw material and the, the use uh, in, uh, in aquafeeds. So as I didn't know what was your, uh, your level in aquafeeds and nutrition, I, I made a presentation that is uh, uh, quite basic, and then I, I hope we will have time during the questions and answers to go deeper in details on some specific points that can be of interest to, to you. Uh, I will share my screen with you. Uh, I would like to say that uh, I have a short presentation, uh, roughly 30 slides. I hope you understand my English. Uh, I don't think that it's necessary to take time for the translation, but if so, just let me know. Uh, I will, so first of all, introduce 
the subject with a short PowerPoint presentation. And then I will move to an Yalix formulation software uh, developed by A Systems. Uh, A Systems is the, the partner of this session. And uh, uh, I, will, I will illustrate my speech, the presentation, through the use of this software to give you some example of how the theory, the, 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 the information we can, uh, we can get through the presentation can be applied uh, in the formulation software for a feed mills. So I will share my screen with the presentation first, this one. So now I think that everybody can see my screen. If it's not the case, please let me know. Uh, and I will start my, my, my presentation. I will speak for roughly 45 minutes and then we will go to, to Alex. I just start my chronometer to get to be sure to be on time. Let's go. So just few words about this presentation. Uh, for those of you who have difficulties to follow up through Zoom, uh, it, yes, I see that somebody right at the end. Uh, how can I see the, the question? Can you let me know? No, no question? Yeah, if you have any question, just feel free to write them down in the, in the chat and I will do my best to answer at the same time. But, uh, uh, I will focus on my presentation. So if it takes time, don't hesitate to. I, I to think you. Uh, yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. You can just go ahead with your presentation, and then we we will have a question and answer question after afterwards. after after oh, your okay. presentation. So, so you can focus on your presentation first. Perfect. Thanks a lot. It will be it will make it easier for me. Right. Uh, that's just to remind you that if you face any difficulty, the the the, the presentation is uh, available on uh, on YouTube. Uh, on live YouTube. So here you've got the, the link to, to follow the, the presentation on, the, on YouTube as well. Uh, so just a few words about the objectives of my speech today. Uh, I would like to discuss with you about raw material in aquafids and especially for aquafids formulation. And then to illustrate the effects of a raw material quality change on one single formula uh, that will be done in Alix. And then I will do the same with a short range of three formula uh, for catfish. Uh, and it will able, enable us to calculate the impact of a change in raw material quality. Uh, and it impacts on the, on the global consumption of raw material in uh, aquafid meal plants. So this is the, the program for my speech today. I hope it will be clear and interesting for all of you. So just let's start with uh, what's aqua feed. So a feed, here you've got the, the, the pellets. And this is how I, I see the feed from my uh, formulation point of view. So first of all, a feed, an aqua feed must comply with the, the regulation, the legislation that you, you have in your country. Uh, that's the first thing that the feed formulator need to, to apply. And uh, by saying that, I mean that uh, you can only use what is uh, allowed in your feeds. And that's the first limit. You cannot choose any raw material. So I'm not a specialist of the legislation in Indonesia, but uh, I know that here in, the, in, in Europe, we have to face, uh, we face some difficulties when a, a new raw material comes on the market because we don't have the authorizations to use it in aqua feeds. Or if we do that, that's just for trial purposes. And the fish or the shrimp fed with this new raw material is not allowed to be sold on the market. So I don't know how it works uh, in your country, but that's the first step. Can we feed an animal with this raw material or not uh, due to the, to the regulation? Uh, then comes the competition. So you have to uh, take into account the competition in order to produce a feed that is uh, not too far from your competitors otherwise. There are not a lot of fish or shrimp farmers that will be okay to use it because it's so new that they won't be okay to, to take any risks with these new raw materials or new feed formulation concepts. Then comes the animal, of course. You will formulate your feed based on the animal species, the stage of growth, the stage of development. Everybody knows that you don't use the same nutrition uh, targets for a young and uh, aged animal. You don't use the same for larvae and broodstock. So this is this has to be taken into account. You don't formulate the same feed for an extensive farming system or an intensive farming systems. 
And depending on the objectives of the farmers, uh, whether it is to have a very, very high growth or uh, to protect the survival in order to have a better survival, even though if the growth is lower, then you will adapt your formulation to those uh, specific targets. You have also to take into account the certifications, depending on the, 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 the farms you are going to sell the feed to. You have to take into account that this farm can be an organic farming or uh, this farm is selling its products to a specific uh, supermarkets. And these supermarkets uh, has its own um, its own certification. And through that, you cannot work with any raw material or any, any additive that you want. And that's just to remind what is the context and the, the, the things we are going to talk about today is not no one of those four points, but uh, this one, the ingredients and the raw material. That's a key issue when it comes to feed formulation and especially aquafeed formulation. Today, we are going to talk about ingredients and raw materials and the use of those ingredients and raw material depends upon uh, prices, availability, disponibility on the market. And that's what we are going to talk about today. And this is just to remind you what a complete feed is supposed to do. So the first of all, you have to fulfill all the animal requirements. It means that the feeds, each pellet need to provide the fish or the shrimp with the uh, appropriate amount of each essential nutrients to enhance the, uh, to, 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 to ensure its growth and to ensure its development. Uh, allowing a rapid growth is most of the time the main top, the main objective of the farmer, but uh, this is not always the case. You also have to keep in mind that your feed must have a limited environmental impact, not only for the environment, but also because your animals are living in their environment. Uh, it's very specific to aquaculture, but uh, the water will be impacted with low quality feeds and this will impact the health and the growth and the performance of the animals you, you, you are farming. So with uh, bad quality feeds, you also impact the health by the um, deterioration of the water quality in your system. So the, a good feed must have no impact on the health of the fish, uh, give a satisfying end product. Uh, and by saying that, I mean, for example, you have to be sure that the pigments you put in your shrimp feeds will allow the shrimp to develop the specific color that is awaited by the farmers or the customers. But if it comes to tilapia or other white fish, then the pigments turns to be a, a limit. You, you have to be sure that you don't put too much pigment into your feed through the raw material, otherwise the meat of the fish won't get this whitish color that is awaited by the market. So it's just to remind that the complete feeds, are, the feed formulator, when it makes, uh, when he makes a complete feed, he has to deal with a lot of constraints. That's what you can see on the left side of the screen. And with all those constraints, he has to produce a complete feed that has all the quality that are listed on the right side of the slide. Uh, and that's why using new raw materials or alternative raw materials is not always easy because uh, when you change, when you modify one or many uh, raw materials in your formula, then you can impact a lot of the, 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 the objectives of the feed, whether it is growth, impact on the systems, if, for example, the raw material is not well digested, or the impacts on the, 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 the quality of the end product. So meat quality, animal pigmentation, et cetera, et cetera. Or taste, even taste can be impacted by the choice of raw material. So today, yes, I, I will discuss more about that. Uh, and I hope it will be interesting for, for all of you. Just a few words before I start on the my my company, so I work for Aliotica. Aliotica, uh, as I, I said before, the, the, the beginning of my speech is a service company and uh, we help feed millers, raw material providers and additive producers to apply efficiently their products in aquafeed formulation. Uh, our main focus is fish and shrimp nutrition. And to do that, we have customers that are feed millers, other that sells raw material and other that sells additives, and we help them to understand all what are the needs 
of fish and shrimps and all the feeds are used in different fish and shrimp farming systems to be sure that their products can be used at their maximum efficiency in feeds. And to do that, we have three kinds of, uh, of approach, training, that's a bit what we are going to do today, uh, marketing and technical support. And depending on the, on the skills of our partners, whether they are just beginners in aquaculture or experience or even specialists, we adapt our support to their needs. For beginners, it's just uh, basic training to understand what is the physiology of a fish and the shrimp, what makes it different from a chicken or a swine or a dairy cattle. Uh, for specialists, it's mainly technical support to help them to face uh, specific problems like uh, digestibility of some raw materials or uh, problems with the pigmentation of animals, etc., etc. So that's just to let you know why um, what I'm, I, I'm doing when I'm not uh, talking with you during webinars. So we are mainly working with animal nutrition and only with aquatic animal nutrition. And to do that, I use the Alix formulation software, the one I will use at the end of, uh, of my speech. Uh, and this software is developed by A-Systems. A-Systems is a company based in France who develops for feed formulation software for four years now. I don't remember how many years, but uh, and I am also based in France. And I used to work for this company, so that's why I, we keep very good connections with the, the, the A Systems team. And uh, I, as I use the software, uh, I'm able to, to 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 show you how how it works and how we can apply uh, all the, 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 the topics I will address today in such a formulation software. So going back to the to the topic, so the nutrition the the, the feeds in the, the systems, in the aquaculture systems, is provided to a fish or to a shrimp. This feed is made of raw materials, and those raw materials can come from crops and their byproducts, fisheries, and mining. And mining, by mining, I just mean uh, phosphates or some other minerals. But most of the time, it comes from fisheries, slaughterhouse, and crops and their byproducts. And that is what we are going to talk about today, raw materials. You also have the additives, and here I list all the kind of additives that we can face on the market. Um, this list is inspired by the European uh, regulation, but I think that it can apply everywhere in the world. Uh, you've got additives that you use for technological purposes. That's the additives like antioxidant, uh, binders, uh, etc. So the, the, the additive that helps you to make a proper fit. You also have the sensory additives. So I go back to pigment in this case. So it's all the, the additives that can modify the feeds or the meat or the skin of the animal, uh, like pigment or uh, palatant enhancers, for example. You also have all the nutritional additives. So in this category, we have the vitamins, minerals, amino acids, all the molecules that you add into your feed in order to enhance its nutritional quality or to bring any missing piece in your formula. And you also have the zootechnical additives. And in this category, it's all the additives that allows you to improve the performance of your fish or shrimp. And by mixing those raw material and those additives the proper way, you can make a feed, but this mixing and cooking has to be managed. I won't go into details into this step today because we just have one hour, but this, uh, this formula that you make with the Alex software based on the nutritional knowledge you have on, uh, on the species you want to feed, uh, those formula will be deeply impacted by the technology applied into your plant. So uh, I won't have the time to discuss about that today. We will just have some slide about that at the end of my speech, but this is also something very important. So through the plants, you mix it and cook it correctly. You shape the pellets and then you bring them to the to the animal. Most of the time in agriculture, when you have to apply medications, uh, antibiotics or other products, it go through the feed. I won't talk about that as I'm not a vet. I just uh, know things about nutrition and feed manufacturing. But it's just to remind you that feeds is often the the the, the support for medication as well. 
Well, uh, I already talked about the impact of the systems on the feed, but uh, you have to keep in mind that the natural productivity of the pond or the, 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 yeah, the pond in which your animals live has to be taken into account when it comes to feed formulation because fish and shrimp, depending on their species and the systems, can find a lot of uh, their nutrients into natural productivity, like phytoplankton, zooplankton. So if you have the opportunity to adapt your feed to this natural productivity, then you can have a substantial gains in your feed formulation, and it allows you to formulate less expensive aquafeeds and to stick better to the real needs of the, of the fish. You just take into account that the fish or the shrimp can find some uh, very essential nutrients in the, in the algae or plankton that grows naturally into your then you have to remind that the, the fish or the shrimp has to be sold on the, on the market. So you have to be sure that you won't impair the food quality itself. And you, once again, to take into account the environmental impact of the, of the feeds on the systems. So it's just to remind what is the, 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 the global systems we are dealing with today. And once again, I will just talk about this part because uh, medication is not my business. Natural productivity is so different from one place to another, and uh, this natural productivity cannot be uh, consumed by all the fish and shrimp the same way. So as we don't speak about one specific species today, I won't be able to go into detail in, on this natural productivity, and I won't talk about uh, food quality. But through the digestibility issue, I will also talk about the environmental impacts of the use of different raw materials. Well, this slide is a bit uh, uh, tricky, but I like it. Uh, I like this one. Uh, it's a slide on which uh, we, we show the different types of feeds that we use in aquaculture. And those feeds are grouped uh, based on the number of ingredients and the moisture of the feeds. Here on the, on the X axis, you see that you've got single ingredients simple mix of ingredients or formulated complete feeds on the right of the of the axis and on the on this axis the the y-axis you've got the moisture content and it's just to say that today we are going to talk about those uh, those one the pink the pink square here compounds intensive aquaculture feeds but you have to keep in mind that a lot of fish and shrimps are still fed with single raw materials just put into the the pond like that or mixed of simple raw material cooked on farm draw, uh, and uh, shaped and um, grinded on farms and put directly into the pond like that. Uh, I won't talk about that today, but uh, through my job in different countries, especially in Africa, I, I still work with this kind of approach. And it's very interesting to take this into account because in this case, aquaculture feed is just a part of a global system in which the farmer produces its, its own rice, for example, he hits the, the rice and use all the byproduct to produce uh, chicken or, or fish. And he uses even rice straw that is not uh, adapted at all for, for fish or shrimp nutrition, but he put it into the pond. And through that, he thinks he, he fed the, 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 the animals, but in fact, it just enhanced the, 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 the algae bloom and the zooplankton growth. But at the end, it will feed the, the animals, but uh, that's, not, uh, that's not really aqua, aqua nutrition. But today, we will just discuss about that, the steam pelleted feed and extruded feed that are used to make complete aqua feed. So my speech today is not to, to talk about uh, raw materials used one by one or in simple mix, but to make complex mix of different raw materials in order to get a complete feed that fulfill all the animal's requirements. Uh, just to keep in mind, uh, this is a slide that gives you an idea of the four different types of feeds that you have to formulate for each aquatic species on Earth. So here you've got the life cycle of almost any animal species. So it starts with the broodstock. And the broodstock gives you some eggs and sperm, so you get eggs. And when those eggs hatch, you've got very young animals. And then you, 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 you rear them up until the larval stage. 
And once the larvae are big enough, then they go to the grow out stage. And this is the longest period in the, in the, the life cycle, most of the time. And those animals, once they reach the marketable size, they go onto the, the market. And on these slides, uh, you've got the fish feeding objectives, but it can be the shrimp feeding objectives that are linked to those different life stages. Uh, when the animals are very, very young, uh, just hatched, then the, the main objectives of your feed is to uh, win the larvae because most of the time you, they, at the beginning, they, they rely on the egg yolk and then they start eating some algae or the zooplankton. And when it comes to complete feeds, the, the job that we have to do when we formulate feed, then you have to be sure that you are able to provide the very small and young animals with incomplete digestive tract with an appropriate feed that help them to switch from natural productivity to complete feed. So when you formulate a feed for those very young animals, the, ad, the, the objective is to find mix of raw material and presentation of those raw material that is adapted to the, to the mouth opening, but to the digestive uh, systems as well of those very young fish. And you have to be sure that the palatability is good enough to make those animals uh, to, to, to give these old animals the, the, um, the idea to hit those uh, complete feeds. Then once the animals are weaned, they become uh, small fish or small shrimp. And the second fish feeding objective that you have is to produce high quality seeds because after these steps, most of the time, the animal goes to the, to the ponds or to the cages in which they will, uh, they will stay for, for almost all their lives. So at this step, you have to be sure that you provide all this, the, the flock with a sufficient, sufficiently well-balanced feed to enhance, uh, to give them the possibility to have um, a good health and a good start for the transition from hatchery or pre-growing systems to the wild, let's say, to the ponds or to the cages into the wild, where they will face uh, some pathogens and some stress a lot more than, uh, than in the, the, the first step of their lives. So then you've got the grow out feed and that's the main, um, the main business, let's say. That's where the fish will remain for the longer period. That's where you have the bigger fish. So it, at this stage of the feed formulation steps, then you have to take into account uh, the cost of your feed because there you will have a lot of uh, tonnage of consumption. So the, the fish will eat a lot and the shrimps as well. And uh, at this step, the feed conversion ratio and the, the better valorization of the feed is a key issue, a key parameter. Because uh, if you don't pay attention to that, you can produce the best feed in the world. Then if it's too expensive when compared with the, the, the performance alone, then you, you won't sell it uh, or you, you won't, it won't make sense. So at this step, reducing the feed conversion ratio, being sure that the fish or the shrimps are able to digest and absorb the maximum of the nutrients that you provide them through the feed is the key issue. And then just, just for, um, for information, you can also develop specific feeds for the termination stage. So it's just to adapt in the last weeks or last months of their life. It's just to modify the, the aspects of the final product, pigmentation, uh, taste, fatty acid contents, whatever, but you can formulate feeds for the very last period of lives of the animal just before to send them to the market in order to adapt them to the, 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 the demand of the, of the customers. And the last fish feeding objective is dedicated to uh, broodstock. So in these specific feeds, you have to adapt the feeds to uh, your specific objectives, which are producing high value added eggs and uh, very uh, efficient sperm. So in these specific feeds, you have to pay attention not to the price. Of course, you have to pay attention to the price and the cost of the feed. But uh, the main objective is to use raw material that can have positive impact on the, um, the survival rate, hatching rates, and quality of the eggs that will be uh, spawned by the, the, the females and also to enhance the motility of the sperm and the, 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 the fecundity of the, of the sperm released by the male. So it's just to remind you that you have different objectives when it comes to fish and shrimp feeds, depending on the size of the animals you are feeding.
so how can we evaluate a raw material? That's the, the topic today. Uh, I use in this, uh, this slide will be used four times today. And you will see that there are four main objectives when it comes to raw material evaluation in aquafeed. Uh, I think it's the same for any type of feeds, but uh, I, I just know about aquafeed. Uh, and I will list here four steps that has to be taken into account when it comes to new raw material evaluation for aquafeed. And um, I didn't say that until now, but uh, on each slide, you've got the uh, not a link, but the, the, the source of information I use to, 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 to create this slide. So if you need any uh, additional information on one, one slide or another, just feel free to, to contact me and I will give you the, 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 the complete link to the, to the source of information. So I adopted this from Glenn Cross, an Australian uh, nutritionist. Uh, and in this quite old article, he listed all the steps that need to be validated when it comes to new raw materials. And in this case, uh, you have first of all to pay attention to the composition, the nutritional composition of the raw material. That will be the first uh, things we will see together. Then once you've got the, 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 the composition of the raw material, you have to ask yourself or to, to look for information about the digestibility of this specific raw material. Uh, that's, quite interest, that's quite important because you can have a very, very rich a protein rich raw material, for example, uh, if it's not digestible, then it's nonsense to use it in your feed because on the level you can have a very high protein content, but if the digestibility content is quite low, then uh, it's not useful at all for, for you. Then you've got the palatability. You have to ask the question if your raw material is palatable or not. Uh, can you use it into your feed in order to be sure that the fish will consume it? Uh, as Dr. Romy said at the beginning, we have to find alternatives, raw material more and more to marine raw materials like fish meal or fish oil. And we know that some of those uh, alternatives, raw material are not so palatable. So we know that if we use them in too high amounts in some feeds, depending on species you address the feed to, uh, we will face some difficulties to make the fish or the shrimp uh, eating these new uh, these feeds. So once you know the composition and digestibility, then you can ask the question of the palatability. And last but not least, as we are talking about uh, manufactured feed, you have to ask the question about the functionality of, the, of those feed. Okay, so first of all, I will discuss about the composition. And when it comes to the composition here, uh, it's a very basic information. Uh, I, in this case, uh, you've got four raw materials, so rapeseed meal, cotton meal, fish meal, uh, standard, and soybean meal. And it's just to remind that you've got different level of proteins, fats, fibers, and ashes, depending on the source of raw material you use. And of course, the most uh, protein-rich raw material is the fish meal in this case. And you see that the, 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 the meal, so the oil extracting byproducts, are quite rich in protein, but uh, far, far uh, from the, by far lower than the, than the fish. Uh, the fat content, here it's just an example. It can uh, be quite, uh, quite different depending on different, uh, on different uh, topics. I will talk about that later. Fibers, that's something that generally we don't like at all in, uh, in aquafits. So when you use an animal byproduct, fibers is not an issue, but when it comes to uh, plants and plant byproducts, then fibers are, are, are present and quite concentrated. And that's, that can be a, a, a quite a big issue. And you also have to pay attention to ashes uh, like uh, uh, calcium and phosphorus. So that's for the basic information. Uh, but then if you go a little bit deeper into details on the raw material, uh, you have to pay attention to the, uh, the details analysis. So when I spoke about protein, in fact, I won't do many things with this information when it comes to feed formulation. I have to pay attention to the amino acid profiles. And I hope you can see it clearly on your screen because they are, uh, it's not written in big uh, uh, characters, but 
uh, you see here that we can compare the essential amino acid profile of poultry meal with the essential amino acid profile of fish meal. And this is quite clear that in some specific amino acid like methionine in this case, the poultry meal has a higher concentration of these amino acids, but not for most of the other like lysine, threonine, lysine, you have a lower concentration of those amino acids in this raw material, even if you have the very, almost the same uh, protein content in those two raw material, you know and you will see that if you use poultry meal instead of fish meal, then you will probably face difficulties to fulfill the lysine requirements of your species because uh, most of the time the lysine and methionine are the most limiting uh, amino acids in, uh, in feed formulation and aquafeed formulation. And in this case, it's quite obvious that methionine won't be a big issue, but lysine will be. And on the other part of the screen, you've got soybean meal and fish meal that, uh, that are compared. And you see here that the soybean has some uh, amino acids that are lacking when compared to fish meal. And that's something you have to pay attention to when it comes to raw material evaluation. So it's not only what uh, the, 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 um, the raw protein or raw fat content, but you have to go deeper into details. And when it comes to protein, you have to know what is the content of uh, those essential amino acids in each raw material. Then I, I spoke about fats, uh, but behind fats, there is the question of the fatty acids. And here you've got the fatty acid profiles of four different fats, a poultry fat, so animal, land animal byproduct, anchovy oils, so fish oil, marine byproduct. And at the bottom, you've got two oils uh, obtained from, uh, from plants and like palm oil and rapeseed, rapeseed oils. And the presentation is here you've got the concentration in percent of each oil in many fatty acids. So you've got the, the, the carbon number of the, of the considered fatty acids and the level of insaturation. And if we look at the anchovy oil, the blue bars, the blue bars here, it's the fish oil. And you see that uh, you've got specific fatty acids that can only be found in those, uh, those raw materials very long chain polyunsaturated fatty acids like EPA and DHA can only be found in uh, fish oil. And when it comes to poultry fat, palm oil, rapeseed oil, you don't face those unsaturated fatty acids. And that's another thing you have to pay attention to when it comes to the choice of raw material. So it's not only protein, it's essential amino acids content. It's not only fat, but essential fatty acid content. And that's the first step of your characterization of the raw material. And once you know that, you have to, uh, to have different analyses of the very same raw material in order to have an idea of the variability of such parameters into your, into your raw material in order to pay attention, for example, uh, to the possibility that one batch of your raw material contains 45% of protein and the next batch is 40 then you have to know that or to be aware of about that in order to be sure that uh, the, the, the final feed that you are producing will have the very same level of protein. So it's not only about protein and fat, it's about the essential components of proteins and the essential component of fats. And as you can see, I will share with you, I saw that there are some questions about uh, the, the, the fact that you can get those slides, of course, uh, I will send them to to you, no problem about that. But you, see, you will see that in my presentation, there are some links to different databases in which you can find all those information. Uh, all the information I will use today are uh, freely available on the, on the internet or in different uh, uh, books or sources. So that was my, my, my objective when I developed this presentation. It was to provide you with information that you can get, but you will get, as, uh, you will get both the presentation and the source of information you can use to, to go deeper into details. So I spoke about proteins and essential amino acids, fats and essential uh, fatty acids. Then comes the starch and all the uh, carbohydrates. And this is just a slide uh, to say that uh, the, the different plants by product contain different type of starch. 
So here we compare the uh, composition in starch of rice, wheat, potatoes, cassava, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, based on their average, average digestibility coefficients, and that's something that we will see just afterward. Um, but it's just to say that the raw starch of different plant byproducts is very different. Uh, from one product to another. So you see here that the starch contained in the wheat is by far more digestible than the one contained into the potatoes, for example. Uh, that's for the raw starch. And at the bottom of the table, you've got some information about the impact of the treatment on starch digestibility. And you see here that for wheat, the raw wheat is digestible at 54% when it comes to starch. If you cook the, the wheat starch, through uh, extrusion, or if you gelatinize the wheat starch, you increase or you multiply by two almost the digestibility of these very same uh, ingredients. But it's just to say that, uh, as it is the case for protein and fat, you have to pay into you have to take into account that all the nutrients are not digestible the same way. And even if it's uh, a starch, and if you have a, an analysis, you can get the same level of starch. You have to pay attention to the way this starch will be used. Uh, it depends on the type of raw material you will use, but it also depends on the species you are working with, because we know that some species are more able than others to digest the, the stuff. So just to go a little bit deeper on the raw material, once you get information on their composition, and I mean fine composition and the viability of this composition, then you have to pay attention on the process uh, that gives you this raw material. And I took in this slide and the, the, the following one, I took the example of rice. Uh, and you just have to pay attention to the different products and byproducts that are produced with the, the rice. So if you harvest one ton of paddy rice, you produce at the same time 1.35 tons of rice straw. And then you process this, the, the, the rice. And you shell it, you mill it, and then you sort it. And at each step of this process, you get a byproduct. So husk, bran, broken rice, and all those raw those byproducts, straw, husk, bran, rice, can be used in animal nutrition. But uh, when it comes to aquafit, you cannot use the straw. We will see why just after, after, and you cannot use the husk. So you just have to pay attention to the different process that are applied on your raw material in order to be sure that you get uh, a byproduct that is stable in its composition, and that is obtained with uh, process that are um, feed friendly, let's say. And then you have to ask about the composition. So I, I took the same example, the rice and its byproduct, broken rice, husk, bran, polishing, and straw. And here you've got the composition of those raw material. And you see that uh, if you look at the protein, for example, you see that some part of the rice byproducts are very, very poor in protein. That's the case for a straw, for example, or us. So you know that for us in aquafeed, it won't be very, very interesting. You also have to pay attention to the global fats, even if uh, we don't have the information about essential amino acids and uh, fatty acids uh, on this graph. This is the first step. You, you have to pay attention to the fat. We want some fat to provide energy to our animals. And you see that some uh, byproducts are very, very poor in fat, like broken rice, us, straw, but when it comes to polishing or rice bran, you can still find some, some protein and some fat. And then you look at the fibers. We don't want too much fibers, so that's why we cannot use husk and we cannot use straw, because we know that this won't be digested at all by the, by the fish or by the, uh, the shrimp. That's the first level of information. And then you have to pay attention to the variability of uh, each analysis. And if we look at the rice bran, for example, you see here that the protein can uh, generally goes from 10 to 17% into your raw material. So it makes a big difference because if you buy one, uh, one ton of rice bran that is 17% of protein at the same price as a, as a ton of rice bran that is only 11%, it's not the same story when it comes to feed formulation because the, 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 if you want to produce a 35% protein feed, then you will pay a lot more to use your tons of poor protein rice bran uh, when compared with the, the, the protein rich rice bran. So it's just to underline the fact that uh, variability can be a very big issue when you use byproducts. 
uh, in, for rice, which is quite a common uh, by, by product used in aqua feeds and feeds in general. You see that uh, proteins and especially fats can be very, very diverse, but the same for fibers here. And here you've got the link to a website. Uh, you, you will just have to click on it. Uh, and you can go to the Feedipedia website on which you will find many information about the different raw materials that you can use and their analysis. And they're used in different uh, animal species, including fish. And just to go back on the processing, if I use a nut or a ground nut in this case, uh, which are full of fat, you have to pay attention to the way those uh, raw materials are manufactured. Uh, if we found uh, some places in which the, 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 the oil is extracted by hand like that. So uh, you see here the oils leaking out of the, of the towel. And through this process, we've got two byproducts, oil that is used for human consumption and the expeller meal that we use most of the time for, uh, aquatic, for animal feeds. And in this case, because of this kind of extraction, we know that there are still a lot of fat that is retained into this uh, cake. So we have this kind of expeller meal, quite high in fat and relatively low in protein. If we use a machine, then we still have an expeller meal, but the extraction of the fat is by far better with this kind of machines. So instead of 12, you've got 6% of fat and you concentrate the remaining protein. If we go a little bit further, we use solvent extraction and we have a very, the same oils with no protein and just fat, but we have by far less remaining fat in the cake. And through that, you also concentrate the protein into the cake. So it's just to underline the importance of, uh, the, um, of the process on the use and quality of the raw material you will, you will find. So expeller meal one, expeller meal two, and solvent extracted meal. And you see that uh, the, 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 the products that will, use, that will be used in animal production can be very, very different based on the process. So it's just to underline the fact that when it comes to feed composition, you have to ask the question of the fine composition of the feed and also on the process that gives you this raw material. Then the second step is digestibility. So that, sorry for that. Uh, here you've got uh, the theory behind the, 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 the digestibility in animal, uh, in aquatic animals. So I think that most of you know that, but uh, uh, as I don't know your background, once again, I, I, I took the very same, uh, the very basics of digestibility. So you put some inert marker into your feed. Uh, you formulate a specific feed. You give it to the, to the fish. And then uh, you get the, 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 the feces. And in the feces, this inert marker, the uh, marker that is not digested by the animal, uh, will concentrate into the feces. And when you analyze the feeds and the feces, with the difference, you can get the information about the digestibility of the raw material using uh, quite simple equations. It's used in any animals, but the difficulty in uh, aquatic animals is, the, is linked to the fact that we, the feces are dropped into the, into the water. And this leads to a dilution of the, um, of the water soluble part of the feces and an overestimation of the, of the digestibility of the nutrient. And this graph, uh, maybe it's a bit uh, complicated, but uh, I think it's very useful. Here you've got the time after the, the, the feces has been dropped into the water by the animal. And here you've got the, uh, the, 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 uh, the content in protein of your feces. So you use, uh, the, we use in this case, the, the Cheldal analysis. So it gives you an idea of the content of, uh, of protein into your, into your feces. And if you take the feces out of the fish and directly anal analyzes it, you have this amount of, uh, of uh, protein in the feces. And if you calculate it, it gives you a digestibility coefficient. So it's uh, um, average digestibility coefficient, ADC, of 86 point something. If you wait a little bit, 
then there is a part of the feces that is lost into the water. So you have less protein into your feces and you overestimate the digestibility. So if you take the feces out of the water 40 minutes after it has been dropped into, the, into it, then you overestimate and you go from 86 to 91% of uh, digestibility coefficient, et cetera, et cetera. So just to go to the next uh, slide, excuse me. Oh, I wanted to show you this. I hope it will work. I, I have to share another screen. It's just to show you that as we have to, uh, just a second, I'm looking for the video. No, uh, I would like to share the video screen with you, but it, uh, it doesn't work. Sorry about that. Uh, this is just to show you the type of, uh, of techniques that is used to measure the uh, digestibility. Uh, in aquafids, here it's with trout, but you can adapt it to many different species. The animals live in, in those tanks, and the feces are released into the water, and you've got a pipe at the bottom of each tank. And you see here the, out, the outlet, and the, out, the water outlet goes through a thieves, and these sieves will retain all the feces. And this is a moving part of the, of the mechanisms and all the feces are retained on these screens. And then when it comes on this bar, all the feces are released into those buckets. And you analyze the feces here. You know the composition of the feed. You can analyze the composition of those feces. And by doing the difference, then you can measure the digestibility of the, of the feeds. So the animals are in those tanks and we can get their feces out of the water in less than two minutes. After uh, after they are they have been put it out by the by the fish, and uh, this is just a table in which you've got some digestibility for plants and animal byproducts used in aquafids. I won't go into detail into that, um, but uh, that's for you. You can get the the presentation afterwards, so no problem for you to to get this information. So composition, digestibility, and then comes uh, the palatability. So this is uh, something that is a bit old now, but I think it's useful. It's the description of the reaction of uh, shrimp, but it's almost the same for the fish, when, uh, when it faces a new feed. So you can build trees like that uh, in which you adapt your feed formulation and you, you can measure the, the reaction of the, of the animal toward a new, a new feed or a feed with a new raw material. So first of all, the animal will detect the feeds and especially with the chemo attraction in shrimp, it's quite, uh, quite specific to shrimp. Then does it move or not? If it moves toward the feed, then it's considered as an attractant. It can stop the movement or uh, it will uh, repel the, 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 the shrimps far from the feeds. So here you've got the first uh, classification. Then if the shrimp moves toward the feed, it ingests or not the feed, so it can reject the feed or ingest it. And if it remains on the feed, then it's a stimulant. And if it continues to feed, then you've got a, a feed that is well accepted by the animal. You've got all the green part, attractant, incitant, and stimulant. But if, for example, after ingesting the first pieces of the raw material or the feed, then the shrimp stops eating, then you've got a suppressant or deterrent effect. And that's just to characterize the different reaction of animals toward the feed. But it's quite interesting when it comes to new raw materials and new formulation. And here you've got different process used by different uh, scientists to measure the palatability or preference of different feeds uh, with shrimp. So in this case, you've got the Y maize uh, Aquariums, you put the shrimp here and you compare two feeds and you measure the, the number of shrimps that go on this feed and this one. So you've got a preference. Here there is a net, you put the shrimps on one side and different feed on the other side and you measure the time for the shrimp to go there. So you've got a time in second before the first shrimp hits uh, the feed. And here you've got a part in which the shrimps are living and you've got two bowls and you measure the number of shrimps that goes from the, this part to one bowl and this part to the other bowl. So you've got, uh, you can compare two feeds and two raw materials 
uh, based on their palatability for, for the animals. You can also use some specific raw materials that are, for example, rich in essential amino acids, because we know that some small molecules that are soluble in water, such as amino acids, are also useful to help the, 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 to enhance the palatability of, uh, of the feed. So here you've got a list of amino acids that has been tested on neutral, um, neutral um, raw material. And we measured the stimulating or deterring effects of those, those amino acids for different fish species. And you see that in this case, alanine, when used in very small concentration, we talked about uh, nanomoles, uh, is most of the time stimulant. And in some species, it's a deterrent. But you've got some essential amino acids, such as arginine, that are as stimulant as they are deterrent for fish species. So it's just to say that some, uh, some molecules, some specific molecules can be used to modify this, uh, this information. And I just note that hydrolysates, which are uh, very rich in uh, small peptides and uh, free amino acids, can be very interesting in such a, such a positioning because they influence the palatability of the global feeds through the presence of very small and water-soluble components such as uh, free amino acids. And this is a booklet. This comes from a booklet produced by ARINA, uh, um, a European research program, in which many raw materials have been characterized based on their uh, chemical composition, but also on their palatability. And you see that we have different raw materials. I just selected some ones uh, based on their palatable impact on the feed palatability. And you see that plant by product are uh, less palatant and can uh, uh, negatively impact the, the, the palatability of the, of the feeds. And of course, animal byproduct and especially marine animal byproducts enhance uh, by far the, the, the global palatability of the feed. Last but not least, the functionality. I will go quick on that. I just go back to my Arena slide, uh, but with different information, the very same raw material here. But you see that different raw material have different density, different pellet binding capacity. The starch contained into the, 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 the mix can be better or worse than, uh, can, can be better cooked or not, depending on the different raw material used. Uh, and each raw material also have an impact on the durability, the physical quality of the pellets. So I will let you see all that uh, at home. But in this case, we see that the fish and squid byproducts or feather mills, for example, have globally a negative impact on all those physical pellet properties. And this is uh, one of my last slides. Then I have two, two, two pictures and I will go to Alex. Uh, this is just to see that for one specific raw material such as peas, uh, you can have very different um, digestibility or different digestibility depending on the way you process the peas before giving it to rainbow trout or nine tilapia. Here you've got the digestibility coefficient of whole peas, raw, uncooked. The same, but dual. So we, we, we put the whole out of the, of the peas. So you see that uh, you have a small impact on the digestibility with this process. But if you extradate, if you cook the peas, then you can increase a lot the digestibility of the energy and dry matter, especially in... Uh, in trout and uh, but also in, uh, in tilapia. And when I talk about um, functionality, so this is something that you, you can see on farms. Uh, you've got feeds in the bucket and you see that there is a lot of dust at the bottom of the bucket. And this is linked to uh, the use of raw materials that are not very well uh, adapted to the process or to the, uh, or are not well processed because this is lost for the, for the farmers. You see that there is a lot of dust. And when it comes to on-farm feeding, you see here, you've got the feed, you've got the farmer provide, uh, that gives the feeds to the fish. And you see here a, a big cloud of dust, and this is a lost raw material. Uh, and this is mainly linked to the choice of raw material, but also to the, 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 the process you apply. But I don't have time to talk about the process today. As I said, I share with you some links to different uh, books that, in which you can find a lot of information regarding the analysis of raw material. Uh, this one is available in English, Tables 
uh, for swine and uh, poultry, and uh, you can get them uh, in the PDF format quite easily. And those two ones are books. This one is quite old, but it's in French. There is an English version as well, but it's quite old, but you've got all the the, 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 the basics. And this one uh, is the, the, the nutritionist Bible. And maybe more useful for all of you, those two links, uh, one to the Feedipedia database, um, in which you can find a lot of information about different raw materials. And this one on the right side, the EAFFD uh, database is the one I use in the Alix software. I will open it right now. And in this database, you have a, a very, very big uh, quantity of information provided by uh, for, for, for animal feeding. So that's it for my presentation. Then uh, I will move to, to Alex. Uh, that's, uh, this is the software I will use. Uh, my goal now is just to show you one formula and the impact of the uh, difference in proteins in a soybean in one formula. And then I will make a group of formula and I will just measure the impact of this modification of the uh, protein level in the soybean to give you an idea of the impact of such, um, such a modification on the global uh, consumption of raw material in the field. So I will have to share each uh, screen one by one. So I hope it will work properly. Just a second, I have three, this one. I will share a new screen with you. So now I am in, a, in the Alex formulation software. Uh, I will start with a catfish 35 protein, 8% fat uh, formula. So here in my software, I've got a list of raw materials. Uh, so I have got some raw materials that will be used. Some of them with uh, specification on the minimum and maximum uh, concentration I can use the prices of those raw material. And at the same time, I want to make a formula that is 35% uh, protein, nine in fat, no more than 3% of fibers, 20% of starch for the technical uh, issues. Uh, this level of digestible energy for carnivorous fish. I also use the essential amino acids profile and I want some information about the uh, phosphorus digestibility. So then if I optimize, if I calculate the, the feed formula, I've got this result. So here I've got my, uh, my formula. Uh, this is the one. Um, you've got here the formula with the first lines here. Uh, you've got 35% of wheat, 22 of soybean, etc., etc. And here you've got the price of my formula. And what I want to say in this, um, what I want to show you in this uh, simulation is that, for example, I use 22.8% of this soybean, 47% protein. So once again, this soybean and its analysis comes from uh, the, um, the, 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 this, this analysis, this soybean comes from the, the, the EAF, FD database, and it comes with this database comes with uh, uh, equations that allows me to calculate the level of each amino acids based on the root on the growth on the crude protein contents of the feed. So here I've got a 47 crude protein uh, soybean that is used in this way. But if I go to the characteristics, I see here that I have got some uh, difficult difficulties to make my formula because, for example, I want 20% of starch and it gives me a, a higher cost. That's what it's in yellow. The software tells me if you go from uh, 20 to 90, for example, you will save six euros per ton. So if I go to from 20 to 90 and re-optimize, so you see here that I only have 90% of starch. So if the guy at the feed mill are okay to make a feed that with 90% of starch, if they are good enough to make a floating feed in this case with that amount of starch, then I go down to 19. And doing that, I saved 6.84 uh, euros per ton of feed. And my previous price was uh, 547 and now it's only 541. 
So by doing that, I can adapt my formulation to the uh, to the local context, and I also have information about uh, the raw materials that are not used, the rejected raw materials, and uh, the reason why they are not used. For example, this soybean uh, is price. 450 is too high. If its price was uh, 420, for example, it would have been used into my uh, formulation. But what I want to show you today is the impact of, for example, this soybean is a 47 person crude protein soybean. Uh, what if this soybean is replaced in the next batch with a 45 percent soybean? So I just say to my software that this one is not available anymore uh, because the new batch that is coming is only 45% crude protein. And uh, I won't take the time to show you, but uh, when I said 47% protein, then I calculate the essential amino acid profiles automatically. And it's the same when I, I switch to 45. Uh, I have some difficulties to, to, to share screens with you through Zoom, so I, I won't take this risk. But uh, the idea is just to show you how it works, but you have to keep in mind that it's not only two points of protein, but it's also the level of each essential amino acid. So if I run again my calculation, I will stay on the composition screen. So uh, you see here uh, why it's not working. Of course, it's always like that. I did that this morning. It was working and now it's not working anymore. Sorry about that. I will take the Okay, just give me a minute. Ah, okay, I understand why it's an the screen. So we'll do the very same thing with another, another formula. Oh, sharing my screen, sorry about that. I hope you can see my screen. It's the very same screen. I will. So I will do the same. So this formula 47 crude person crude protein is this raw material is not available anymore. So I re-optimize my feed. And you see that the 47 crude protein is not there anymore. And it has been replaced by the 45% crude protein. It had an impact on the use of fish meal. This one, 45% crude protein. And it decreased a little bit the 65% uh, crude protein. But above all, this modification of 2% of crude protein in my raw material had an impact on the composition, as I said, but also on the price of the formula. You see that uh, with the 47% crude protein soybean, my price was 12 euros per ton lower than with this 45%. And this is linked to the global protein, crude protein content of the raw material. But this is also linked to the uh, contents of essential amino acids like lysine, methionine, threonine, that is content into my soybean. As I use 45% pr crude protein soybean, then the level of each of those essential amino acids in the feed is lower. So it's less expensive to fulfill the, the requirements on those essential amino acids. So just for your information, I made a simulation between these formulations with a 47% crude protein soybean and a 45% crude protein soybean. In three formulas, I made a range of formulas with, uh, for catfish with uh, three formulas. Uh, the first one, oh, excuse me. Uh, the first one is a 35% protein, 8% fat, 33% protein, 8% fat, and 31% protein, 10% fat. So that's a classical uh, a classical range of feed for, for catfish. Then I will go to the, um, I, I made two simulations. I made the first range of formula with a 47% soybean and the second one with the 45% soybean. And by doing that, I'm able through this, uh, this software to uh, to calculate the impact of this switch of quality between two raw materials on the global consumption of raw materials I have in my plant 
based on the tonnage I used on my plant. And I will show you how it works uh, quite clearly. Up those three formulas. I will share two screens with you. The first one is the tonnage list. So here you see that I have my three formulas that makes the range 35, 33, 31. And here I've got the tonnage, 600 tons of this one, 1,800 tons of this one, and 4,000 tons of this one. So I have my whole range of uh, catfish feeds. And this allows me to calculate the consumption based on the formula I use. I will share another screen with you. This one, I think it's okay now. So I go into another screen. And in this one, I have uh, four, my three formula, my three formula, and I have the production formula. So in production, I use this 47% crude protein soybean. And in the study folder, I use this 45% crude protein soybean. And then with the tonnage I shared with you, I can calculate what is the impact of this switch in crude protein contents between two soybean meals. And quite easily, here you've got all the raw material used in my three formulas. Here we see that this fish meal 65% protein with this price is consumed at 180 tons. This multiplied by the price give me this cost and it represents 5.7% of my total costs. And this raw material is used in two out of my three formulas. And you can do it raw material per raw material. And this is about my actual productions. And if I buy, for example, a, a soybean that is not 47 anymore, this is this line. But 45, this is the last line. You see that here I don't have the 45% crude protein soybean. But in my study folder, so in this part, I I simulate the impact of these two point lesser rich in protein soybean on the global uh, raw material consumption. And you see here that uh, there is an impact on some raw materials. There is no 47 crude protein soybean anymore, but I have the 45% one. And you see here that there is a difference in the price. Here you've got the cost raw material per raw material. And you see that here you consume this is the global price for the raw material in the first context. And this is the global price for the raw material in the context in which you have 2% uh, of protein in your soybean uh, less. So it has a clearly big impact. So it's 71,000 euros per month that is lost due to this 2% difference in the crude protein content. So. I won't go deeper into details because uh, I speak for one hour and, uh, and six, seven minutes now. Uh, that was just what I wanted to share with you today, but maybe just one last um, uh, screen from uh, uh, Alex, just for you to, to understand what I've done with the, the raw materials. So as I said, I have share my screen with you. And this will be the last one for sure before the, the question. So here it's the, the, the raw material database. So if I go to my soybean meals, so as I said, at the beginning, I had a 47% protein. And by modifying this crude protein uh, of my soybean, I will recalculate all the essential amino acids that we can uh, see here. I will apply some equations. And you see that in a 47% crude protein soybean, I have this level of uh, essential amino acids. And this is calculated automatically. <laughs> and if I go to uh, 44.9, uh, then I will recalculate based on that. You see that I lower the content of those amino acids. I will do it again, 47. And you see here the difference. Here is the level of each essential amino acids for a 45% crude protein soybean. Here you've got the 
the, the concentration in each amino acid for 47 percent crude protein soybean meal. And just it, it can be very, very uh, can seem very low for you, but this difference of 0.3, 0.03 uh, in methionine and lysine can have a big impact on the global cost of your of your feed. So uh, that's it for me for for today. That's what I, I wanted to, to to share with you before the the question and answer. I hope uh, it was interesting for uh, for you. As I said, I will share. The, the presentation with the, the participant. I don't know how it will work, whether it is me or, uh, or Mindo who will do that. We, can, we will find a way to share it with, uh, with all of you. And now, yeah. if you are okay, I, I drink <clears throat> some water and I come back. All right, thank you, Guillaume. Thank you, Guillaume, for the nice presentation. And uh, it was really nice. And we got uh, many knowledge about this. And the most important note that I take uh, from your presentation is uh, for the raw material evaluation, there are four things that we need to pay attention. First, the composition. Second one is digestibility. The third one is palatability. And the fourth one is functionality. That's the, that's the very important note from your presentation. Okay. Uh, untuk tidak memperpanjang uh, prolog, mungkin ada Bapak Ibu yang ingin menyampaikan pertanyaan kepada Guillaume Resli. Uh, silakan mungkin bisa raise hand uh, bisa menanyakan langsung dalam bahasa Inggris ke Guillaume atau mungkin nanti bisa saya terjemahkan yep. ya silakan Pak halo 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 ya ya silakan Pak silakan how do you want to proceed for the question I uh, I go to the to the question no, and answer Guillaume, part and uh, Guillaume, read the uh, yeah uh, for, first, uh, let let the participants ask the question, and then the, I will pass the question to you. So you you, you have to wait, Guillaume. Okay. Until okay. there's a there's a, some question that I, I give it to you. So okay. Just enjoy your water first, and then uh, I will ask the <laughs> audience if you if you have a question, please raise your hand, and Guillaume will will ask your your question. We answer your question. Because I saw that there are lots of questions already, and yeah, yeah, there's a lot of questions in the in the chat room. So, but probably we, we give some opportunity for the oral question first. Perfect. Okay, Pak Sukarman, mungkin tadi raise hand ya. Akan, Pak. Halo, halo, Pak Romi. Ya, Pak mungkin bisa dibantu dalam bahasa Indonesia. Oke, oke, Pak. Oke, Pak. I have uh, some question for Guillermo. Uh, the first question is uh, about the raw material. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about uh, the salt fish and uh, indigo, indigo vera leaf meal as the feed ingredient? How to use? Indigo vera? Indo, indigo vera leaf meal. Leaf meal. The leaf, leaf meal. Okay. Leaf meal, yes, uh, leaf meal. Uh, how 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 much minimum and maximum uh, rest restriction uh, in feed formulation for the aqua feed? Well, uh, the second. Oh, yeah, excuse me. Okay, please go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, the, this the second question. Uh, I'm confused if we must uh, combine the ingredient. Uh, Dry ingredient and uh, wet ingredient. Uh, for example, if we use uh, a fish meal, a soybean meal, and other ingredient, the, uh, that is uh, the dry ingredient. Uh, but we also want to use the uh, uh, wet ingredient. How to how to how to make the fit formulation with your software? Okay. Thank so uh, please wait, please, please wait, uh, Guillaume. I think is, is that the question is clear for you, or do we do I need to repeat again? I think no, it's no, clear, clear, Guillaume. That's yeah. Clear. Okay. Yeah, so I, I will give uh, another opportunity for uh, two or three uh, uh, person. Okay. Kalau ada bapak ibu yang ingin bertanya, uh, please raise the hand. Okay, Pak Romi Tambunan. Okay. Uh, good morning, Jim. 
morning. Uh, in other uh, we- webinar, I heard that uh, crystalline amino acids, and this is about digestibility. So I heard about uh, crystalline amino acids and enzyme uh, do not have any effect on stream, do not have any good effect on stream because of the uh, time to digest in uh, stream uh, intestines is uh, very short. Is that true or have you ever? Uh, thank you. All right, probably two questions. First, Guillaume, I think this is already uh, take a lot of time for you to answer the question. All right, so the second Thank question you. is clear for you, right? Uh, is this yes, well. enzyme? Enzyme is uh, good enough for a stream because you know the, the digestive system of stream is very short uh, because now, now so many products uh, offered by uh, like enzyme. Uh, probably you can explain to us like uh, whether enzyme is it good enough for, for stream. Okay. Go ahead. So I, I start and string right now. Uh, first of all, so thanks for, th- for those questions. Uh, when it comes to the indigofera raw materials, uh, that's a very typical example of uh, what I suggest to do this morning. Uh, this is typically the kind of uh, plants that the leaf, especially. Uh, that has almost no information available on the way we can use them uh, in aquafits. Uh, it's a kind of, there are plenty of indigofera species and we don't have any information on the anti-nutritional factors that we can find into the seeds, the, 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 the roots, the trunk or the leaves. So the first step, and this is exactly what we do uh, when we come to um, when we come to a place where we want to use local newer materials. The first step is to analyze those these specific raw materials. So you 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 spoke about the leaves. So I think that there is a, a process that gives you some uh, leaves mix or dry leaves uh, powders. I don't know what you can use, but the first step is to analyze this raw materials and to have an idea of what it contains uh, from a chemical point of view, proteins, amino acids, fats, etc. Then there is this question about digestibility. But before that, maybe you can ask the question of compatibility with the fish. And when you use a, a raw material of that kind, you can be sure that you will face some, uh, some fa- anti-nutritional factors, some molecules that will impair the digestion by the animals whether it is fish, shrimp, chicken, or whatever. Uh, this is very hard to measure, but the best way to do that uh, is to make different feeds and to make a partnership with a farmer or, uni- or a university or somebody that has the animal you want to feed with this raw material and to make, for example, four or five different feeds in which you put 2%, 5%, 7.5%, 10 Etc. of this specific raw material. And you compare the growth of the fish. You, you, you just make something very simple like that. And you see that if at 10%, the fish are okay, they grow well, then you open them, you see the meat color, you, look, you have a look at the intestines. If there is no inflammation on the intestine, you can see some time blood droplets in the intestine of fish. It means that this raw material is uh, impairing the, 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 the permeability of the intestine. Uh, you can see different colors in the livers of the fish. So it's indications that this raw material is not well adapted to the, to the animal. I have no answers to your question. You can understand that, I think, uh, of maximum levels you can put into, uh, into the feed because, you first of all, you have to do that. And, um, and indigofera is typically the kind of plant in which you can find some active secondary metabolites that acts as anti-nutrient in, um, in digestive tracts. But uh, what I can say is most of the time in aquaculture, leaves are not welcome because they are full of fibers. So um, uh, if you can get access to the leaves of this, uh, this plant, uh, to the seeds, I mean, of this plant, it's probably a better way to start. So seeds are full of anti-nutritional factors, but they are also full in fat and uh, proteins most of the time. So it's better to use the seeds than to use the leaves in most of the cases. But I don't know specifically which kind of uh, indigofera you are working with. And like that, I have, not, um, I have no information about the, this specific raw material. 
that was the first question. Uh, the second one was about dry and wet raw material, how to mix them. Uh, I mean, I, I think it's dry powders uh, or grain and uh, wet products from that come directly from the, from the fields or from, the, from a, a manufacturing plant. Uh, that's a bit tricky, but the, the answer is very dependent on the type of uh, process you will apply. The, if you are doing it at the lab scale or in, uh, on farm, uh, it can be very difficult to mix products with different moistures, uh, semi-moist raw materials and the dry raw materials. It will be hard to mix them, so you can use some waters, but then you will have to dry the, 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 the feed. So this can be complicated. And uh, when I talked about functionality, the fourth points, the fourth point I, I discussed with you today, uh, the idea was to also to take this into account. You, even if you have a very interesting raw material, sometimes depending on your process, you are not able to use it because it's liquid or because it's sticky or because uh, it's too hard to be uh, milled by the hammer mill. So uh, this is what I call functionality. It's all that can impair the use of a specific raw material into your feed. But when you go to a, a plant, most of the time, uh, you've got some limits that are fixed by the equipment you have into your plant. But uh, those differences of moistures are not too hard to, to take into account. But uh, the question was also about the way we can use such difference in moistures in the, the, the in formulation softwares. That's not so hard to do. Each raw material comes with a specific uh, moisture content. And this specific moisture content uh, gives you the dry matter of the of the feeds of the of each raw material, and you can formulate whether on dry matter or taking into account this uh, moisture. But you can also normalize your feed. You want to produce a 12% water, 12% uh, moisture feed, so you can uh, make equations between the nutrients in order to take into account the fact that, for example, a 50% uh, semi-moist raw material will be dried at the end of the process, and you can take into account this drying and express in your formulation metrics the, 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 the level of nutrients on the 12% basis, 12% uh, moisture basis. That's not so hard to, to do. It's just a matter of um, uh, equations. You have to draw some specific equations. So uh, I won't save this one. Uh, I you can see my screen here. It's not very uh, a very difficult calculation, but this is a, a database I use for training. Uh, so I, I didn't wrote two difficult equations in this one, but it's just to show you that you can link. If, for example, you, you modify the moisture content from 9 to 10, then you can recalculate other, other nutrients such as dry matter, for example, but you can also uh, put this, uh, this parameter in the equations for all the nutrients. And you can, if you go from 40% of uh, water into your raw material to 12, then you will concentrate all the other uh, nutrients. But it's just a matter of uh, calculations. And you can do it automatically in such a, a software. I don't know if I answered your question, but uh, to me, it was linked to those two, uh, two parts. The, the way you can process the raw materials with different uh, moistures and uh, the way you can use it into a formulation software. This is a, a different strategy based on what you want to do. And the third question I had to answer was about crystalline amino acids and enzymes. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, that's a, a very good question. And there was for a long period of time questions about the usefulness of crystalline amino acids in complete feeds for shrimp due to the fact that there, uh, there was two questions, in fact. The first one was about their water solubility. When you, when you provide shrimp with uh, water soluble compounds, you can be sure that some of them will be lost in the water because of the slow and external eating process in shrimp. So you see that the, the shrimp eats the, the, the pellets outside of its mouth and it takes time for the shrimp to swallow the, the pellets. So some of the water soluble compounds will be lost. That was the first doubt about the, the, the efficiency of uh, crystalline amino acids that are water soluble. 
And then you've got the question of the duration of the digestion process. Um, for essential amino acids, we have clear proof that it works well. Uh, no problem with that. The, uh, you, you can use uh, crystalline amino acids in feed formulation. Some suppliers have developed specific, <coughs> excuse me, specific uh, molecules that are not water soluble in order to lower the losses linked to the, 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 the feeding behavior of the fish, of the shrimp, excuse me. Uh, it lowers the concentration of, uh, water, uh, of losses uh, into the water. But whatever the type of essential amino acid you use, if you use uh, them in uh, an efficient way, I mean with an efficient mixer and an efficient way to, uh, to, to manufacture the pellet, then the, the, the essential amino acids, a part of them will be swallowed by the shrimp. And then there is no problem with the, 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 the the length of the digestive tract because pure amino acids and free amino acids or small peptides are very, very efficiently and easily digested by the shrimp in the hepatopancreas. No problem with that. It's not a matter of duration. Uh, essential amino acids are useful in, uh, in shrimp feed formulations and they, the, 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 the length of the digestive tract and the efficiency of the digestion in shrimp allows their um, application in their feed. Then the question about enzymes is more tricky because enzymes, first of all, you've got to be sure that the enzymes, which is a protein, uh, can survive the extrusion or high pelleting temperature process before uh, being spread into the pond. Or you can apply them in liquid form, but this is another uh, technical question that you have to, uh, to clear before using these enzymes. Um, I, I have some proof uh, that enzymes can be very useful for shrimps when added to the to the to, to, to the feeds. So there was question about yes, this the very same question as it's a protein, will it survive the the, the, the eating process? Will it survive into a bag? And uh, what's the efficiency into a pond? Uh, at lab scale trial, uh, we have clear indication that it works. When it comes to the pond, it's less difficult to see uh, the efficiency because in shrimp, there are so much parameters that, um, that modifies that, how to say that? The, the, when you calculate the performance allowed by a specific feed into a pond, it's always very difficult to have very precise data about uh, what is, for example, the amount of feed that has been eaten by the, by the shrimp. It's almost impossible to say that. You don't know what is the part that has been washed into the water and what is the part that has been eaten by the fish, uh, the, the shrimp, for example. But um, at the lab scale, we are able to see very interesting things. And in, on farms, you can see also some troubles that can be solved by the addition of enzymes when you are sure that the enzymes can be applied in proper condition. And then once again, the duration of the digestive tract in this case is not a big issue because the, the shrimp itself produces enzymes in the digestive tract, and those enzymes are quite efficient even when the digestive process takes a, a small duration. I, uh, sorry for that, I don't find my word, but uh, the, the, the proper shrimp enzymes are quite efficient uh, to digest the shrimp. You've got digestibility coefficients for protein or fat as high as 80 90%. So it means that it works quite well in this small. Uh, and uh, uh, invertebrate, but the addition of exogenous enzymes can be a, can be a good tool, and the length of the digestive tract and the duration of the digestion is not a big issue for me. And you can use them. But the very first question to ask is: uh, Is it okay to add them, uh, and at which part of the process? And will they be still? Uh, will they still be uh, functional once they reach the pond? That's the, the, the way I will, uh, uh, I will answer to your, to your question about uh, enzymes. And Thank you. Thank you, Guillaume. Yeah. I think we got, we got the point about the enzyme in, in swim. So, ada masih ada Bapak Ibu yang ingin bertanya? Mungkin raise hand. Kalau tidak, ini ada beberapa pertanyaan di group chat. Guillaume, there is a yeah. couple questions in the group chat. I think you, you can also see it. it there is uh, one question from Philippines uh about the what specific diet for larvae to fish fry to fingerlings in order to achieve the high survival and then there yeah. comes the second question is there any enzymes to add for larva diet uh, of fish 
This is uh, for, for, the, for the hatchery phase. And the third question, how we control the feed additive in feed formulation to achieve high digestibility? And the fourth question, if high protein content we use in the feed formulation, is there specific additive to make effective the digestibility of feed? And the fifth question, what technology can we use in order to utilize more carbohydrates in the diet of fish or shrimp? And this is also related to the question from Brazil. There's a one question from Brazil about the use of phytase. Uh, you know, during the, from, during the extrusion process, during the pelleting process, uh, which one you, you think is better? What is the mechanism? What is the a proper uh, mechanism to use phytase in the diet formulation in order to more effectively use the carbohydrate in the, in the, diet, in the diet for fish and shrimp? I think there's a two cases in the Zoom group chat that I can give it to you now. I pass to you for, to answer the question, Guillaume. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I've got the, the first one, but I don't have the one from Brazil with the fight test. But, there, um, there's a, yeah, there's a, on the top uh, is, a, okay. yeah, there's uh, I will, I will already over, overlapping here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, so the first question, what specific diet for larvae fish fry fill in the lane in order to achieve high survival? Okay. Uh, well, there is a question about feed formulation, enzymes to add, uh, or we can control the feed additives in feed formulation to achieve high digestibility. Okay. Well, uh, all those questions, at least the, the five questions that uh, arose in the chat uh, from Ryan, uh, they are all linked and there is uh, one very simple answer to that, it depends. It depends on the type of feeds you use. It depends on the type of raw material you use. But to go a little bit deeper into details, um, when we talk about very small animals, uh, very young fish, very young larvae, very young crustaceans, the idea is to provide them with uh, feeds that is very easy to digest. So in this case, the use of uh, raw material that could be expensive seems to be a good option. If we use raw material, uh, quite expensive because of their high quality, I mean, low temperature fish meal, uh, squid meal, uh, highly transformed raw materials from plants, for example, uh, to me, it seems a good investment because you will ensure a good survival because you will have a good nutrition of the animals. Uh, you make feeds with high level of good raw material, uh, with a good equilibrium in, uh, in amino acids, with uh, also a good premix. I didn't talk about premix for vitamins, minerals, and other additives, but this is a key issue when it comes to aquafid and especially when you feed young animals. Uh, but as you know that the level, the quantity of feed that will be eaten with very young, small animals like that, to me, it was the case investing in high quality raw materials. Uh, I have no magic uh, formulation to do. It depends on the raw material you find on your market. It also depends on the type of animals you want to feed with these feeds. But that's the, that's the, the concept, the idea. Uh, that I go back to the slide in which uh, I compare the feed for young animals, uh, broodstock, etc. Uh, the the um, the interesting things with this slide, I think, uh, is to to keep in mind that not all the um, all the different stages won't eat the same amount of feed. So if you are doing winning diets or larval diets on those two steps, you won't. The, the, the animal won't eat big amounts of feeds, so uh, it's a very good option for me to invest in very high quality raw materials. Uh, I mean, highly digestible, almost already hydrolyzed for the proteins and uh, rich in, in long chain polyunsaturated fat. That's the, uh, a good way to, to do that. Then the question was about how to apply enzymes on, the, on those diets. Uh, well, I, I come to the previous questions with enzymes and the, the the idea is uh, when and how will you apply those enzymes because they are quite fragile. And uh, it's most of the time, enzymes are very expensive. 
uh, and you have to be sure that you use them the proper way. They can offer you very good payback if you use them properly. And it can be especially useful to add enzymes in very young animals like that because we know that uh, fish or shrimp have some uh, immat have immature digestive systems when they are quite young. And providing them with exogenous enzymes, such as phytase, if you feed them with plant protein, uh, or proteases, or lipases, or, or carbohydrates, will help the, the, the animal to digest, to better digest the feed. So it will uh, provide him complementary enzymes to the one that his own digestive tract is producing. But to do that, once again, but it's the same that it's for fry, uh, growing, fattening feed, or, or broodstock you have to be sure that the, the, the application of the enzyme is compatible with the, uh, its uh, activity because enzymes are very, very fragile and uh, need some specific conditions of pressure, temperature, and uh, moisture to, to be efficient. Um, the fourth question, how we can control the feed additives in feed formulation to achieve high digestibility? I think it's the same. Uh, it depends on the type of uh, uh, premix you use, the way you put these specific additives into your feed. If you put them before the, the extrusion process, then you have to be sure that you will find them after. Uh, because cooking, high temperature, high pressure will destroy some active component, that's for sure. So if you put them in the mixer with the raw material before the, before the extrusion, or sometimes we find it before the, the, the hammer mill. So this is for sure the most uh, uh, destructive way to use a product. But you, you, you really have to think at which step of my process will I use, will I put those uh, additives into my feed. Uh, of course, if you put them before mixing, you, you are sure that the um, even very low dosage feed additives will be very well mixed with other raw materials. But then if you extrude, it, if it goes to an extruder that will destroy the, the, the very well uh, mixed products, it's a nonsense. So that's my answer. Ah. Ah. Four. No, no, there is a lot of noise, sorry. Uh, high protein we use in feed formulation. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Gil. Excuse me. Uh, well, uh, high protein feeds or low protein feeds, the question is always the same. Uh, we talked about, a lot about additives uh, now, but uh, of course, the choice of raw material is the first step. Additives is just a way to uh, go a little bit further. Just first of all, the, the formula should be appropriate. The choice of raw material should be well uh, think to, to produce an efficient feed. Additives such enzymes are very useful tools but they need to be applied once you know which raw material are available and why you choose them. Uh, to enhance or to ensure the good digestibility of your raw material, protein or other raw material, there is a part that has not been addressed during that speech, and I'm sorry about that, but it was a matter of time. Uh, it's all that belongs to the, to the plant. This step here uh, has a very big impact on the way the fish or the shrimp will use digest your feed the um, the particle size you you obtain after the hammer meal the way you cook the 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 the, the mix raw material the temperature the preconditioner condition the level of water you use during the preconditioning or during the extrusion the temperature at which you dry the feed all those um all those parameters will have a big impact on the final quality of your feed and above all, on the digestibility. So the finer, the, 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 the thinner the, the, the particle size, the better the digestibility, for example. So enzymes uh, and other additives are very useful tools. But first of all, uh, we have to keep in mind that the basics of feed mills are milling raw materials and mixing them and cooking them. That's the three, that the three very um, first step that you have to keep in mind. So you've got raw materials and the name tells what it is. And those raw materials has to be mixed. That's, what, that's why you use those feed formulation softwares in order to have uh, the better mix possible with the available raw material. 
And once you got that, you have to go to the hammer mill to, 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 to reduce those raw material into powder that is adapted to the, to the mouth of, uh, of the fish and to the, to the size of the pellet. And this is a critical part of the process. Then you have to ensure that the mixing is well done and that the cooking is well done and drying as well. So that's really, to me, that's the answer to, to, to care about the, uh, the basics of the, of the feed meat, raw right. material, Thank formulation, you. cooking. Yeah. Thank you, Guillaume. Uh, probably you can, you can relate it to the, the use of phytase in the, in the next question. Yes. I mean the, uh, uh, can you read the question once again because I cannot find it? Oh, uh, the question is uh, whether phytase can be used during the extrusion process or what is your suggestion? After, after the extrusion process, you, you add the phytase yeah, or... Yeah, okay. something like that. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, well, it, it depends on the supplier, on the phytase supplier you, you work with. Some of them uh, offer protective phytase or protective enzymes that can survive the pelleting process. That's for sure because pelleting feeds are steam pelleted process are the one applied to chicken and swine. So they, they develop specific... I, yeah, uh, that's that's the first question, the first answer. Uh, it depends on the supplier you work with. And uh, right. if you can find a supplier that is able to analyze phytic activity of its product into a feed, uh, it helps a lot because you are sure that uh, you, you put it in your process following its own uh, recommendation. And then you analyze the phytic activity into the feed and you are sure that the enzymes is still active still uh, uh, workable, still useful uh, in your feed. But if you have any doubt about the, uh, the, the heat stability of your enzymes, the only way is to spray it on the feed uh, after, the, after the drying, after the extrusion. Uh, and you need specific machines. You've got drum coating or vacuum coating if, uh, if you are equipped with this kind of uh, equipment. But drum coating with liquid enzymes is good it's a good way to apply uh, heat sensitive enzymes made, like like phytase. But or, or, or always according to the manufacturers, because the yeah I think there's a, a lot of phytase, uh, several types of phytase that are available in the market right now. So the, yes. the I think the, the last question from uh, many people in the in the group chat here, how how they can get the Alex uh, formulation application software? Mm. Okay. Well, uh, this software is, um, as I said, is developed by a company called Assistems. Uh, the contact for, for Asia, um, maybe, I know that they are, uh, they are here. Uh, maybe they can give the contact on the, on the chat, the people who are working for, for Alex in, uh, in Asia. Uh, on the chat, because this is a software uh, that is developed for in different, uh, <clears throat> you've got different package for this software, uh, and it's uh, you have to, to to pay for 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 this software, uh, but it comes it comes with all what you you need for the raw material characterization, uh, feed formulation, printing of the of the formula, and then if you need the if you need some training, then the I or people from A systems can do can do that for you, no no problem. Uh, but I see that Peter uh, gave you the the, the, the contact of uh, Doctor Ronar Reyes that uh, will be able to give you some more information about this software. Uh, you can yes. also contact me, and I will uh, revert the, the 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 question to um, to A systems. That's okay. it, uh, It's available in all the languages. Uh, you can uh, you can choose the language that is uh, adapted to you. So is it also available in Indonesian language. In which Indonesian language? Yes, uh, sometimes right. uh, you you have to, to 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 sometimes you have to translate the. Uh, All right. Some All right. Name, but you can do it by yourself. <laughs> but just for information, just, you can just check. That's just a joke, Guillaume. So Hello, yes, uh, yeah, Bapak Ibu, kalau ingin mendapatkan software yang tadi disampaikan oleh Guillaume, ini ada email address dari uh, Dr. Reyes. Mungkin bisa dicatat. Ini ada uh, emailnya. Bapak Ibu bisa menghubungi Dr. Ronald Reyes 
untuk mendapatkan software eh, baik secara free ataupun mungkin membeli softwarenya secara keseruan. Silakan Bapak Ibu menghubungi yang ada di grup uh, chat ini ada email uh, Rona Reyes. So, I think uh, Giom, this is a very nice presentation and also a very nice uh, training course that you offer to us to our society. This is uh, provide us with more knowledge on how to make a proper lab formulation using software and also thank you for your insight about how to use the raw material for the diet uh, for the aqua fit uh, we now we we more we we understand more we uh, about the importance of the palatability digestibility and also the you know the functionality and the composition uh, on the behalf on behalf of indonesian aquaculture society and also the indonesian fit millers association the aquaculture division and also the institution of aquaculture singapore Uh, we would like to say thank you to Alex to, for providing this very nice presentation, and we uh, probably we can we can work together in the future. We make a long-term cooperation between our society and also Alex uh, formulation, and I will like to end my moderator here in Indonesian language. If we, if this is okay for you, Jim. Uh, I will. I will say to. I also would like to say goodbye to everyone that attend the, the the seminar, and after this we can we can make a contact again through by email, Guillaume. Terima kasih bapak ibu yang sudah hadir di presentasi ini. Uh, untuk uh, pres, uh, materi presentasi nanti kita akan share di link yang telah di, diberikan tadi di Zoom chat. Ini ada di apa dibagikan oleh sekretar MLI. Untuk tidak memperpanjang waktu saya serahkan ke Mas Sony untuk menutup acara ini. Sekali lagi terima kasih Bapak Ibu dan Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ya, terima kasih Pak Romi atas uh, perkenan memandu Fostek yang ke-6 siang hari ini. Bapak Ibu yang kami hormati, uh, tiba akhir di Fostek yang ke-6 ini. Perlu kami sampaikan beberapa hal tadi uh, berkaitan dengan Uh, sertifikat dan uh, materi, soft materi nanti akan disampaikan oleh panitia. Kemudian Bapak Ibu yang ingin uh, bergabung di member MAI, Bapak Ibu bisa bergabung di link yang ada di sini atau bisa kontak langsung di WhatsApp ini. Kemudian Bapak Ibu ketika kegiatan MAI, info-info dan lain sebagainya bisa diakses follow media sosial kita yang ada di uh, screen ini. Terima kasih, selamat sore. Mudah-mudahan kita bisa bertemu di uh, post-tech seri-seri selanjutnya. Terima kasih Pak Romi. Thanks for Mr. Jim Res. Selamat sore, kami tutup. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih. Thank you, Rod. And uh, I hope it was interesting. And you will get the presentation with my, my contact. So I know that there are lots of questions that didn't get any answer so uh, yeah. please send them to me and i will answer them okay thank you Guillaume. thank you Guillaume. i will i will send you the uh, the, the list of the questions uh, probably through email through email um, yeah thank you once again thank you Guillaume, for uh, joining with us with our society webinar international webinar and yeah we will always uh, keep in touch and uh, yeah we need we need you and alex formulation for make uh, our aquafit production become more better and better Once again, thank you, Guillaume, and thank you, see you again. See you again. Thank you for the nice presentation. Thank you.